Hi, everybody. Raina here with the next episode of Book Banter. And thank you all for joining me. This evening, I will be talking with Lisa Teasley. Her new book, Fluid Stories, is an amazing collection of short stories. She also has two novels, another collection of short stories, some amazing paintings. I want to talk to you about her visual art for sure. And she wrote and presented on a, on a BBC show we might talk about a little bit because I am fascinated by how all those things fit together. So if you have any questions for Lisa at any point during the show, type them in the comments below and we will answer them in real time. And without further ado, let's welcome Lisa to Book Banter. Hi. Hello. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, I'm so happy you are here. I, I'm. This is always so much fun to get to meet new people through this medium. Like I will be emailed a little bit. And of course, I, I've been like internet stalking you for research, but <laughs> getting to actually have this conversation with you is amazing. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. So happy to be here. So this is your second collection of short stories. Um, I'm always interested in like how you, how you choose, like what goes into a book like this. Cause I, one thing I love about this book is you follow, um, I, I described it to a friend as like kind of vignettes. Each short story, I love the, the people. You're following a person or maybe a couple of people and you get kind of this just cross section, this, this moment in their lives. And I, I love that so much. So how many like didn't make the cut? <laughs> like, that's always an interesting, like how did you get there? So there are 16 stories. And, and for me, the thread is choice. Mm -hmm. All of the characters are at a significant moment of making some sort of choice. Um, whether it's a relationship choice or it's, it's involving euthanasia or um, surrogacy. Um, there are all kinds of choices, like, it, you know, important challenges that, that the characters are dealing with. And so that's what I was looking at. But otherwise, just as you were mentioning, I mean, it's all different kinds of characters in different settings. But that's, that was the one through line. But I'm very character driven. It's all about who is, who is this human and how do they see the world? You know, yeah. do, do they feel like the world happens for them or to them? What are their wounds? What are their strengths? You know, and so I that's love... really what I'm, what I'm interested in. And, and, and that shows for sure. <laughs> um, I love reading biographies and memoirs. And it's kind of for that reason. Like I, it's sometimes it's because I already know the person, you know, and I want to know more. But a lot of times it's just random memoirs or biographies because I really am interested in like how this person dealt with whatever was you know whatever they encountered in their life and I really like in your stories some of them to me I was like I is this a real person is this not a real person like I know that these are you know fictional short stories but they're so like beautifully done that I'm I'm I did like I'm, I'm it's between those like fiction and nonfiction in my mind. I have to keep reminding myself like this is probably not real, <laughs> you know, and and I love that like fiction that crosses that line to me in my mind. Like I'm in there clearly living it with these people. Thank and, um, you. Love it. Thank you so much, because I have always had a challenge with the idea of characters being made up because they are real to me. Mm -hmm. You know, once a uh, once. I wouldn't even say the idea of a character. It's just like once a character arrives in my mind and they're kind of hovering and I think, oh, this is who I'm going on an adventure with, whether it's a long adventure as a novel or a short adventure, a short roller coaster ride, you know, like strapping in. And yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is what's happening right I'm here. I'm not a plotter. I just, so I'm just as surprised at the end. Mm -hmm of a story or a novel. Um, your, your stories or the way they're set together with having the characters, um, like each one having a character, a central character that's so prevalent, um, reminded me of an exercise that I had to do in school. And that was basically making up a character, their entire, you know, backstory, all of this, their entire life, like, um, and then 
putting that the same character in multiple situations. So oh. you, so you have developed, you know, as character development, and then you're putting them in there. And you have a different character in each story. But in some ways, it reminded me of like, okay, this is each character is so well fleshed out, like they've come to you as you were describing, and that that shows and, and I wonder, I like imagine them, some characters in different like situations because they, that each character was so like real. And, and you, you say, you just sit down and write that. That just comes out. It comes out in terms of once I really know who this person is, you know, once, once they are clear, you know, um, as opposed to, you know, like flickers, I'm getting flickers of a character and then you know, they kind of land and, and there they are, you know? Yeah. yeah. So actually our first question, I, I we're going to tie that in. Um, Linda's asking, would you rather write novels or short stories? So, and then after that, I'd love to know what like that different process is for you. You know, um, so I have, let's see, three novels in the drawer, so to speak. <laughs> um, and uh, and it, it was probably a matter of timing as, as uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know about that. But to answer the question, I enjoy the process of a novel, but a short story is like, it's like a, um, a fast, passionate interlude mm -hmm. as opposed to a long commitment. So it's just two different completely frames of mind and frames of being. And, um, and so it, it also matters what else is going on in my life. For example, if I have an art exhibition or um, as you mentioned, the documentary, and right now I'm working on an opera libretto. So this wouldn't be the time for me to focus on anything else, but um, I could, I could perhaps write a short story and, Actually, there is a novel percolating because there's a character <laughs> who I, I kind of, I can feel her, you know, kind of waiting mm -hmm. for me to, after I'm finished with the libretto. Um, but it's, um, I don't, I can't say I have a preference. It's more like what is, what is happening and what is most urgent and, and kind of, and pulling me toward the project. Okay, so we're gonna back up a moment. You're working on an opera? Question mark. Yes. Do tell. How did how how did that come about? What can you tell us about that? Is fascinating. So um, last year, so so I should I should back up and say that two years ago I decided to really commit to my own work because prior to that, like the the in between the years between my last book and this book are numerous. It's many, many years. And while I was teaching and then while I was editing with Los Angeles Review of Books, I found that I put everything in my teaching and I put everything in my editing. And so much so that I was only, um, I would say, like, I think the great novelist Steve Erickson, for example, who was, who, who was editing a literary journal called Black Clock and um, would invite me, you know, to, to contribute stories according to the themes that he was coming up for each one. And, you know, so there were various journals like that, but if it, if it weren't for editors like him, writers and editors like him, I just would have been completely silent while doing the work of teaching. You know, like I taught at CalArts and I taught at, UC Riverside and, you know, the UCLA Writers Program. Um, and yeah, and it's, it's, you know, it's not to blame anything else other than how I am as a teacher and editor. So once I did that, I, once I, I left LARB, my beloved Los Angeles Review of Books, such, such great people there, such a great place. Yeah. And I just focused on writing. And so I was publishing a lot. And so the director, producer of this opera, um, James Dara, who is the director of Long Beach Opera, was reading, he and the composer, Shelley Washington, 
were reading what I was posting, you know, saying, oh, I, did, I have this story, this essay here on Instagram and reading the link, you know, from the link tree. And, you know, I don't know how many months of that, that they were doing that, but they, they, they decided I was their librettist. And I am right. so grateful because this is, this so far has been such an exciting project. So, so completely fulfilling and surprising and, you know, and wonderful. And the, the project years ago with BBC television, it was similar um, in the sense that I was surprised to be um, approached with a project like that. They had read um, Glow in the Dark, the stories mm -hmm. of Glow in the Dark, and then um, came to me through my website. So I can see the light is a little, has gotten a little weird, but. Um, that, is, okay. that is magical. I, I can still see, yeah. <laughs> It's just giving you just these these beautiful sun rays coming across. It's 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 working for you. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love those moments. Like they came to you. You know, they they enjoyed your writing. They came across it one way or the other, and then I, I just like being in that room. And they're like, "But what what about Lisa? You know, we've been reading her. You know, Instagram. You know what I mean?" And then someone else is like, "Yeah, why don't you call her?" Like what? <laughs> Like, you know, that had to, that conversation had to happen at some point. Same with the way you're describing, you know, the BBC opportunity was at some point someone was like, how about, you know, how about Lisa? And, and someone else was like, oh, I guess, you know, email her, see what she says. Like when, what is that? And then, and here you are, you're like writing and, and on, you know, BBC TV show. And I'm assuming that was never like part of your plan like your dream of what you were going to do with your life but now all of a sudden you have this resume that's like just a, very impressive it's a short version is very impressive you're like an artist renaissance woman you're like a little everywhere I love it <laughs> so how is the writing like of the opera uh like it's obvious it's different from the from novels and short stories and stuff, but does that, is it challenging, different, difficult, or, or are you be able to draw from your past, like, and, and that's kind of an easy fit for you? So what's different is, you know, working with structure, you know, the structure of acts, you know, and mm -hmm. writing an outline beforehand and knowing where I'm going. And I have had some experience in terms of of when my novel died was on the road to being a film and it was attached to three different directors. And, and so I was asked to write a screenplay and so, and to think about it in terms of structure. So looking at my own work, like looking at the novel and choosing a voice because there are two main characters in Dive. And so, and being asked to make a choice whose story it is and to figure out, you know, to, to write it with beats in mind, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, act one, act two, act three. And, and, and so that's, that's different than the way I normally work. So, so that's the, um, I wouldn't even say that's the challenge because I, I, I find that I'm getting better at shifting, you know, mm -hmm. shifting what is needed for a particular story, you know? And so, so in writing the, the opera, I'm really enjoying knowing what's gonna happen, but still, I mean, I don't know what they're going to say. Right. So as I'm writing that, that's, ah, oh, wow. This is the one who speaks up now. This is the one who's, who is, um, you know, rejecting the other character or, mm -hmm or goading them or, you know, whatever it is, you know? So yeah, it's a wonderful, it's just, it's the creative process is such a blessing, you know, mm -hmm. it really is. Yeah, is it more collaborative? And it's more, this okay. is, and so that's another thing that I should have come out the gate with is that it's so amazing to collaborate because being a writer alone with your laptop is, it's not any fun, really. It's, not, it's like, you know, and I feel like when I'm strapped in, you know, with a character for a short story, 
or I'm strapped in with a character for the long road of a novel, it's I'm captive and there's nothing, you know, there's, there's almost nothing else going on in my world, you know, and I, and I'm alone with them. So, or I've become them, you know, so, um, so yes, the collaborative process is wonderful. <laughs> it's really, really wonderful. We, you're, I sense that you are the type of person who enjoys not just the process but learning yes you know uh because you you're you're so going with the flow and somebody who doesn't enjoy learning or enjoy like like you know absorbing a new like a little bit of a challenge is good because you get to like expand you know exactly stretch your wings a little bit and and that that shows in this conversation (laughs) so um Okay, so I'm going to change it up a little bit. If you, is there something you haven't done that you'd like to do? Do you think of that? Could, these things sort of seem to fall in your lap, but do you, is there something that you haven't had the um, opportunity to do yet? Well, I know there's plenty that I haven't, but right now, you know, now that my cup is full, <laughs> I can't think of what it is that I want to do, you know? It will come to you. It'll come to me, yeah. yeah. That's kind of how I see things, you know? Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to, to uh, make sure that's not the, I mean, the shutters are closed, but there's still like little. No, oh, there's a little bit coming through. Yeah, a little. Yeah, yeah cause it's, it's like, it's afternoon sun right here. And something um, with these virtual events that I've learned like over the years is at time of year. Oh my gosh, this, yeah. the, the light will be beautiful like during the summer. And then as it's transitioning into winter and vice versa, like you think yes. you have it all, I'm ready. I'm. This is what it's like. And then like a month later, it's like, wait a minute, where's that light coming from? Right, right. <laughs> we did, I, I did one of these like two years ago, I think, and, the, and it for the author, I didn't know, but there weren't any lights on in her, in the room she was in. It was all outside light. And by the time we got done, the room was dark that she was in. <laughs> and, and it was a lot of fun. It was actually like we did the send off, like literally she's just the light from the computer screen. Yeah. But it's one of those things like you never think of, like how it's going to change in like the half hour that you're you're here. Right. Yeah. Um, so Linda also asked, how has working in television affected your writing? Um, so did you, because you wrote for that, for the show I as well? Did, but you know, I would put quotation marks around that because writing it, the documentary was basically already structured by the director in terms of she chose the characters. Um, and that was another thing that I wasn't used to like, oh, real people are characters, you know? And, mm-hmm. and, um, and so they, they arrived from London to LA, they got to know me. Um, they shot some footage of me and my life before we took off for Atlanta because the, the, it's about high school prom. And, and at that time, the BBC was doing a series on American culture and they were asking mm-hmm. four different writers to take them into four different worlds that they wanted you know, to, to look at of American culture. And then so, um, so my subject was high school prom, but I also felt like the sub theme was they wanted to see where Southern teenagers were at in terms of politically where they were at, mm-hmm. you know? And so, um, so they went ahead to the school that they chose and found, found the students that they wanted to focus on. So then when they brought me there, um, it, that part was all already shaped. And so as a writer, that's, that's extremely different for me because mm-hmm. I'm driven by character. And so, um, you know, so I, so I had, I didn't have a say in who, you know, who we were covering mm-hmm. and that there was a bit of, um, you know, some, some of the kids involved were chosen because they, they could be entertaining, like in reality, like, for reality television kind of thing, you know? Right. 
So, you know, so it's, there's that. There, well, it is, it sounds, it's very different because you're, you are very much in a structure that a lot of those things have been imposed on you. And then you also have a very specific audience. So right. you're having to do that. And that's, that is, totally different than I rolling over in the morning, having an idea, jotting it down in your journal. And that becomes a short story. Like, exactly. Yes, exactly. So much. <laughs> <laughs> so Dean has a question. Oh, great. Um, so speaking of character, I saw an interview with Jasmine Ward recently who said characters come to her in a dual manner. Mm. As she, as she writes a character, she feels that character sitting beside her, kind of whispering the dialogue while at once living and speaking inside her. Do yours come to you in a similar fashion? It's, um, I would say it's not dual. And, and I'm going to quote Meryl Streep here because she was asked a number of years ago, how does she, how is she able to be all of these different kinds of characters and you know and like how does she nail it kind of thing and she said without a beat she said we all have everyone in us and that statement is exactly how I feel like so when I am writing I become that character they are in they are inside of me and so it's not dual and when I do when as as I'm writing the story their story once it's finished, then I go in and edit as the writer who is going to help help the reader um, stay grounded in the room, you know, mm -hmm. as so, you know, I make I make sure that there are enough gestures that um, that that are noted, you know, where they are in the room, you know, what kind of 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 um, you know, like, are they touching their throat? Are they, you know, looking around? What does it smell like? What does it sound like? You know, all of those kinds of details I'm putting in as the sort of editor slash writer. But during during the process, it's not dual at all. It's like it's this it's the solo journey of this of the of the main character. Unless there are two main characters that are equally, like in the case of the novel Dive, where there are two who are equally, who have their own alternating chapters. Wow. See, that's, it's kind of like the, the character that's, um, is channeling to, to yeah. bold a way to say that. Um, it is giving you the bulk of it and telling you who they are. And then you're like, okay, well now who's my audience? I want someone to read this. What do I need to fill in to make it, you know, readable for, for somebody who picks that up. Right. And if I'm not, if, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that Charles Dickens said that all of his characters live in a certain, live in another realm and all he yeah. has to do is access that realm and there they are living and breathing which is a similar way of you know of looking at that like they they exist yeah they're they're here which is a whole other i mean if you pull in even the science of it yes are are it, there are other dimensions here with us running side by side and yeah. how much of this inspiration that we have as artists in our dimension is just coming from the ability to sort of tap into yes. tap into that. Yeah. And I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Everything you just said. I do kind of love that though. And I, and I, for reasons that I can't properly explain, that is a much more palatable way for me to understand the possibility of multiple dimensions than any scientific explanation you could ever try and, and explain to me. I'm like, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> but then you can tell me, oh, that you, you know, a character came to you, you wrote it down. And then you can tell me in that context, I'm like, yes, I get that. Right. That I understand. Right, right. <laughs> Yes, it's you can tell. I was, we're all um, we're good at literature, and math is never that's never a thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was my dad's world, math. Well, 
interestingly, my, my son is very good at math, loves to read, but is very good at math. And, and he just zooming right through things. And I'm like, I'm glad you know what you're doing. Yeah. I'm just happy you're getting a good grade. I don't know what, I don't know how you did that, but I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so your paintings, which I'm going to link to the paintings on your website um, because everyone needs to go and they need to look at them because they're beautiful. Um, something I noticed about most of them as well is that they're people, they're characters, they're portraits, whether uh, they're actual like people that were in front of you or you were thinking of or, or, or characters who came to you that you painted. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. Um, is that a coincidence? Like, oh. do you feel that same way? So most of pretty much everyone, as I'm looking around in the room here, everyone that I paint, I know. And the thing was when I was a kid, I felt like I couldn't recall even my parents' faces. Like just as I would close my eyes, I couldn't see their faces. Mm -hmm. And I thought I'm going to draw everyone in my life as a, as a, as a way of memorizing them. And so, and at a certain point, I would say by the time I was a teen, because even like when I was 10 years old, you know, like the school principal commissioned me to paint, you yeah. know, someone for them. And, and then, you know, in middle school, my fellow classmates were commissioning me to paint or draw, you know, their mothers for Mother's Day or their fathers or, you know, or their pets or whatever. And so by that point, whatever that glitch was, was gone. You know, I could then recall everyone, but I still like painting people that I know is, is like an act of love. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful work and everyone needs to click on it when we're done here. You know, you don't have to go now, just in a few minutes. Um, and, and look at your work because it is beautiful. And also uh, way to hustle in middle school um, like, I don't know if they came to you first or you were like, you got five bucks, but either way, excellent work. <laughs> and you know, the funny thing is I was surprised every single time, you know, oh really? And even, and I was even being asked to do album covers and I was thinking, oh. isn't that redundant? But no, they love it. So. <laughs> Oh, this is just a side project so that yeah. I can remember you. Like, this isn't for you. Are you sure? Yes. I love it. I'm going to see if I can block it on this book. Uh, there we go. No, that is, that, that is amazing. Um, <laughs> but I guess that's, right, you're doing it for you. That's what they tell you to do. Yes. Do your art, writing, painting, whatever it is, do it for you. And then, you know, if people like it, great. That's great. <laughs> Well, I think the light is appropriate, Lisa, because something that I'm that I'm catching from from middle school, evidently, on to to opera, um, you you carry that like you have this light about you, and it's clearly coming through in in the, you, but in your work, and that's you know attracting good things. <laughs> Thank you. So do you, Raina. Oh. Thank you. Now, I mean, I, I consider myself, long consider myself uh, a support structure for, um, for you, to be honest, like you, for people like you to be a part of, of your journey is, uh, brings me joy. So I, I, one of the reasons I love doing events, um, doing this series, all of that is because that gives me an opportunity to connect with people like you and to, to boost this signal, to, to be part of, of each other's journey. Oh, thank you. And it's all about connection, isn't it? And, and bringing joy to someone else. I always try to, when I walk out the door, you know, kind of check, check whatever might be going on with me in terms of, and leave it at the door so that wherever I'm going, I can just bring, you know, kindness. Mm -hmm. it, since it's contagious, you know, because we have, we know that we have so much going on in the world. And if we can just, 
be of a little bit of service in terms of, you know, someone who's crossing our path being nice. I mean, it's, it's being kind can make such a huge difference in someone's day. So much. And so just a little, just a little. Yeah. Just, just and I, I love your shirt. And that's it. You yeah. don't need to elaborate. That's just yeah. it. But that could be just the one little piece of kindness somebody needs to hear and they make them smile and then they yeah. walk a little bit taller for the rest of their day. Yeah. And we've done our job. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Spreading that a little bit. Well, Lisa, I really enjoyed talking to you and yeah. I appreciate you joining me for Book Banter. Thank you so much for having me, Raina. I enjoyed this so much. Yes, and let me put the link down here, y'all. We have copies of Lisa's book at the bookstore. You can order it through our website and we'll ship it to you anywhere or you can pick it up in the store. We have them right here. <laughs> and it's so good you you will not regret it this is a great one i also want to say this is a great book um for a gift like the holidays are coming up because each each story like none of them are very long but some of them are short it's a good book you can sit down and read it in one setting or you can come in and out of it so it's great for people who are big readers read it cover to cover immediately you can do that or people who say oh i don't really like to read that much this is great because you can read one or two stories. You can put it down. That's totally okay. You can come back in an hour, a day, a week, a month, and you can read another story, another two stories. So keep that in mind for all, all your people who say they're not big readers. This is a good one to get people back into reading. So to the thank you. You are very welcome. <laughs> um, and thank you, everybody, for watching. I see you all out there. We really appreciate you. Bye.